welcome to the guitar department. My name is Joe Alton and I'm your host. Today on the guitar department we're going to talk a little bit about country. We're going to learn the song Chattahoochee by Alan Jackson. We're going to use that song to discuss some soloing techniques as well as some rhythm comping techniques. We're going to discuss part five of our cage system. We're going to talk about the C form today. We have a special lick of the week and in the tone zone we're going to talk about the Amazon Basics Compressor. Welcome to the guitar department. The song Chattahoochee by Alan Jackson has one of the most recognizable country lead licks at the very beginning of any country song out there. It's basically an A form and a, a G form of the pentatonic scale. We're in the key of C. And here's how it sounds. So it opens with the slide from the second fret to the third fret, and the third fret is our root. So we're going to slide up from the second fret to the third fret, and we're going to pluck it once more once we get there. And we're going to do that four times in a row before we move on. One, two, three, four. Then we're going to go up to the top string and hit the fifth fret, down to the third fret, down to the open string, and back to the third fret. So that whole line goes. Then we're going to jump back down to the fifth string and we're going to do that same slide two more times like that and then a third time without the second hit. So one, two, three and this time no second hit on that C and then we're going to go up to the fifth string down to the, or up to the fifth fret of the sixth string, down to the third fret, and then jump down to the fifth string and give it a slight bend. We want to make that sound like a six. It's a half step bend. And then there's a little break. So that whole riff up to this point sounds like this. At that point, we're going to start the whole thing over, but with a vastly different ending. So we're going to start on that 2 to 3, that B to C slide again. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then after the fourth one, we're going to hit that fifth fret. This is a D. And we're going to slide it up to E to the seventh fret, down a string to the fifth and seventh frets, back up to the seventh fret on the fifth string like that, and then we're going to skip a string and go to the third string on the fifth fret, back up to the fifth string on the seventh fret, so, then down to the seventh fret of the fourth string, like that. So we have a couple of uh, alternations here. Just like that. It's a lot of third finger work. You sort of have to roll off of this seven onto that fourth string seven and then back up. Then we're going to go to the fifth fret on the fourth string and up to the seventh fret. So like that. And then we've got sort of the most country part of this ending here. We're going to go to this uh, E flat and move, we're going to hammer on from E flat to E the 6th fret to the 7th fret on the 5th string, down to the 5th fret of the 4th string, we're going to go 5 and 7, and then up to the 5th fret on the 5th string, give it that slight bend, and then back down to the C on the 3rd fret. That is a very common country cadence, which is a tricky phrase to say, frankly. But coming off of what is essentially a flatted third into the major third, 
down to the fifth of the chord up to the sixth of the chord. In this case, it's a, um, a G to an A. And then we're hitting this D and, and pulling it down, bending the string so that we get that, uh, that uh, minor third again. And then down to the root. That's a really common cadence for a country lick. And now we're going to talk for a second about the rhythm part to the song Chattahoochee. And it's a pretty basic example of how to strum a chord and keep a pulse of the rhythm behind the, the song. So the drum part to this song carries a sort of a two-step rhythm, a boom ch ch boom ch ch boom ch ch boom ch ch And we're going to learn how to emulate that on the guitar. And here's what I would recommend you do. Um, the chord, all the chords in this song are C, G, F, and D7. Now D7 only comes in a couple of times, but we'll talk about that when we get there. The verse part, when he starts actually singing, it sounds like this. What I did there is I fingered a normal C chord, and with my right hand, I tried to just hit the note C on the third fret of the fifth string and then do a down-up rhythm off, across the whole uh, five strings of the chord. Just like that. Now, I also occasionally palm mute to give it a little more of a percussive nature. Sort of gives a little bit more of an accent to that down up. But you can hear it even without the chord in play. If I just mute all the strings and do the same technique, we have that basic two step motion. As far as the chords on the left hand, we're going to finger the C chord like normal third fret, second fret, open string on the third string, pointer finger on the first fret of the second string, and the bottom string the high E is open. When we switch to the G, I'm going to move these two up a string. My third and second fingers go up a string. Pointer comes off, and some of the time I just leave it that way. I'm using the palm of my hand right now to mute the bottom string, the E string, so that it just doesn't ring. You can also plant your pinky on that string and have it ring out, which I did earlier in the example. Um, but they both sort of sound the same, especially under the, the, the rhythm of the song itself. And that's the verse part. When we move on to the chorus part, or what I'm referring to as the chorus, you could refer to it as the pre-chorus if you'd like, um, I'm going to switch to a full bar chord F. We're going to give that eight beats total, four total downstrokes for two measures. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then we're going to switch to C, three, four, G, two, three, four, like that. So we have a full measure of C, half a measure of G, and then half a measure of C again. Then we're going to go back to our F for, our, again, two full measures. A D7, which is fingered with the middle finger on the uh, A of the G string, the second fret of the G string, pointer finger on the C of the second string, and then ring finger on the F sharp of the high E string. We're going to strum from the fourth string down, and that's going to get four beats also, just like that, and then back to our G chord. And that one gets two full measures. And it has kind of an odd rhythm. That D7 combined with the two Gs afterwards uh, give it an odd number of measures. But it does fit the song if you follow the lyrical pattern. So to recap that whole chorus section, F, C, G, C. 
F, D7, G. And then we're back on that verse part again. And that actually gets you through most of the song. Uh, we do have a solo section that is slightly different, and uh, we can talk about that real quick. But the form of the song is that we do that verse section twice in a row, followed by that chorus section all the way through, back to the verse, and then we have another version of the intro. And over the intro, you just play the verse chords again, and uh, the lead part plays the part that we talked about at the very beginning. Then we have uh, that verse part again, followed by the chorus, and then our first solo section. And the solo is split up into two segments, um, one that is a guitar solo and another one that is a fiddle solo. They both get eight bars or eight total measures. Um, so let's talk about what's happening in those measures. We've got F for, four, for two measures, to C for two measures, back to F for two measures, and then to G for two measures. And that's where the guitar solo stops and the fiddle solo starts. And we're essentially going to repeat the whole thing, but this time we're going to add in that D7 again. So we go back to F, C, F, D7, G. And again, that one has one extra measure on account of we do that D7 and then two measures of G. And that's really it for the rhythm parts of the song. Uh, what happens from there is that the verse repeats. We have another version of the intro. Uh, we have another verse. One last chorus, and it ends with the intro again. Um, so if you learn the form of the song, you can just practice those few sections, and that's how you play Chattahoochee by Alan Jackson. And now it's time for part five of our caged system series. And today we're going to talk about the C form. And to briefly recap, caged is a system that offers a roadmap to connect all the sections of the neck of the guitar. It's one of many that are out there. And uh, we have talked about the G form, the E form, the D form. And so now we're going to talk about the C form. And these are named after the open chords from whence they came. So in this case, we're going to take a C chord. And we're going to move it up one fret. And when we do that, we have to move the zeros with us. Otherwise, it just doesn't sound good. So we're going to take the fingers and rotate them so that the middle finger plays the note the pointer finger was playing, ring finger plays the note the uh, middle finger was playing, and the pinky comes into play on the uh, fifth string. And that leaves my pointer free to bar that first fret. Now this isn't the most commonly used bar chord shape, but it is actually used, um, it's probably third or fourth on the list. Um, off the top of my head, it's used in Under the Bridge by the Red Hot Chili Peppers in tandem with the E form on the top string. Um, but this puts our root on the pinky note. So wherever your pinky is, that's the root of the chord or the scale that you're playing. In this case, um, it's a C form, but my pinky is actually on D. So this is technically a D chord at this point. And here is the open D chord, just for reference. You can hear it sounds basically the same. We've just got one added note with this F sharp right here under the third finger. So from there, we're going to take that bar chord shape and turn it into a pentatonic scale. And here's how we're going to do that. Um, we'll start with the root itself. That is your D in this case, and we're going to move from there down a string to the fourth string, and we're going to play a, uh, in this case, a two and a four. So we've got a five, then down a string, two, four, two, four again on the next string, 
and then your middle finger is going to play the third fret of the second string. From there, we'll go pinky on the fifth fret, and then on the bottom string, the first string, we'll have a two and a five. And then to continue going in the descending form, we're going to go from this five down to the second fret, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the top string, the fifth fret on the A, down to the first fret, or the first finger on the second fret for the F sharp. And that gives us, again, in this case, a D pentatonic scale, D major pentatonic scale. Which, of course, offers up a minor pentatonic scale as well if you consider using the pointer finger on the fifth string as the root. So in this case, it would be a B minor pentatonic scale. And you get that more bluesy sound out of it. If you use your pinky, you get a little more uh, uh, southern rock, maybe country sound. So. Those are the two forms of the pentatonic scale, and then we're gonna take that one step further and turn it into a diatonic scale. And in this case, on the top string, we're going to go, uh, we have the two and the five from the pentatonic, and we're gonna add in the three on the, the low E string. And then when we go down a string, remember this is the root of our minor, so if you wanted to make it a minor scale, you would start here with your root. And we're going to add in the fourth fret before we hit the fifth fret. So two, three, five, two, four, five, and then down another string. And uh, this one's also going to be two, four, five. So two, three, five, two, four, five, two, four, five. Down another string will give us a second fret to fourth fret. And that's it for that string. Then we're going to move down another string, and it is two, three, five, and two, three, five on the next string. And again, if you start on this D, this pinky note on the fifth string, that gives us a major scale. If you start with your pointer finger on the uh, fourth, the second fret of the fifth string, that gives us a minor scale. And that's the C form of the cage system in pentatonic and diatonic form. Next up, we've got a special guest lick of the week from the guitar department producer, Bryce Jarrett. Hey, I'm Bryce, and I apologize for my pale legs what's called a studio tan right here and these legs are cancer free skin cancer free that is so uh, anyways this is uh, uh, basically a blues lick but it's got kind of a country feel to it uh, similar to Chattahoochee um, in, in the type of rhythm so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a, a groove here that you could play along with this and this is basically an end lick um, for something that you would play at the end of this one four five progression so here, let me play a little bit of this groove for you. doing there is it's an E so I'm using my first finger here to go from that flatted third to the third and then to the fourth so it's a sus just hammering those on and what I'm doing with my right hand I'm basically providing the the bass the kick drum type of a thing And then all I'm doing is moving it up to the four chord and just barring down here at the fifth fret. And again, I'm using the 
chicken picking type of a thing with your fingers here. And we're doing the same thing with the, the, four, the four chord, we'll do with the five chord, the B7. So, and then we have this lick <clears throat> that goes at the end. So what this is is just basically uh, an E blues scale, but I'm doing a couple of techniques here. This is kind of a common thing that you'll see is guitarists slide up to a note. You hear country players doing that a lot, and you hear like Stevie Ray Vaughan did it all the time. Pat Metheny does it in, in kind of a different way, in a jazz way. So that's, we're just going from that flatted seventh, that D. That's our scale, that E blue scale. So what I'm doing here is I'm just basically running it down. So I, I just, I run it down and then I come back up for one little bit here. I'll play it, try and play it slow again for you. And then we, we bend into it. Another thing you can do there, if you don't want to switch over and do the bend, you can just go. So here we go, the whole thing. That last bit's for another lesson. That's your Lick of the Week. And now it's time for us to enter the Tone Zone. And to start with, we've got a beautiful Fender Player Series Telecaster, which I've chosen for the Country episode because it has single coil pickups in it. Uh, Telecasters are beautiful. They're kind of a staple of the electric guitar world. We've got a three-way toggle switch so we can have either the neck pickup the middle pickup, there, the, excuse me, both pickups, not the middle pickup, there isn't one, and the bridge pickup. And you can hear the tonal difference there between the neck pickup, this one here, and the bridge pickup. <clears throat> and so for our next bit, we're gonna leave it on the bridge pickup. We're also playing through, again, our Fender Blues Junior. This thing is an amazing tube amp, real small combo amp. Very little in the way of effects, which makes it perfect for what we are using here for to platform our pedals on. And then our pedal of the week is the Amazon Basics Compressor. Now, Amazon has jumped into the pedal game in a way that has uh, sees them rebranding other pedal companies' pedals. So the first round they had were rebranded Nux Pedals, which is a, a smaller pedal, pedal brand. Um, and then I believe this more recent round is a brand called Coco. And so what they've done is they've taken those pedals and basically recased them so that they say Amazon Basics on them instead of the original brand name. So we've done a compressor on here before. We had the Keeley Compressor Plus, which is a very high-end four-knob compressor. Um, and uh, it runs about $120 to $150 new. This pedal is $25 shipped. Uh, so right off the bat, expectations should be a bit lower. But let's go ahead and click it on and see what it sounds like. Here is the tone without the pedal. And then if I click on the pedal, What it does is it offers a little bit more attack. You get these little pops right before, uh, right when you pluck each note. And it gives a little more twang. Now, that twang comes from them taking the gain, the volume from the output of your guitar, and when it runs through the pedal, it squeezes that gain down so that your lower volume notes actually raise up in pitch and your higher volume notes get lowered in pitch. 
and it, it literally compresses your signal. And when it does that, it evens out the volume of the notes that you're playing. So you end up with a lot more even sounding uh, volume and dynamic range. Really good if you're going to do some hybrid picking. It has uh, anything that you want to sound really nice and even, or you're plucking with uh, a pick and a finger. It's really good for that purpose. And it adds that little poppy twang, as we were talking about. Now, this one has three knobs on it. One of them says sustain. So we'll go ahead and crank that one up. And the first thing you should notice is it's a little noisier. But essentially what it does is it makes your notes last a little bit longer. So I'm going to turn that one back down get rid of some of the noise from it. That would happen on just about any compressor, by the way, but uh, obviously at this price, it might be a little bit of a factor. Our second one here says level, and level is just your volume. So if I turn that up, it works a little more as a boost. And that's another way some people use compressors. They'll turn the level up to beyond what it is without the compressor on, and it works as a boost. It actually increases the volume of everything that you play, um, as well as compressing that volume to make it more even. So it's a multi-use pedal. I'm going to turn that a little bit back down. And then our last one says attack. And this is sort of the amount of pop that comes off of that initial pluck. And again, I'm plucking those notes normally. If I use my finger and pull up, we get a similar effect. But with just the pluck, you can actually hear that note being squozened down from its initial volume. So I'll turn that back down, and we can hear what it sounds like with it all the way down. And that's our pedal of the week, the Amazon Basics Compressor. Well, that's our show for this week. I want to thank Bryce Jarrett, our producer and special guest, for his lick of the week. I want to thank Riemann Music for giving us a place to shoot this show, as well as supplying our beautiful Player Series Telecaster and the, uh, the amplifier, the Fender Blues Junior, as well as the Breedlove Acoustic that I used in the rhythm section. That's from their Eco brand, by the way. If you thought that was beautiful, you should come check it out. Be sure to check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash the guitar department, and be sure to tune in next time right here on the guitar department.